Hello everyone, I'm Ola and this is Coding is for Girls. As promised in my last video, today I will show you some fun things. Today we will learn how to make it possible to allow user who is running your program to provide the value and then use it in our program. While we'll talk about it, we will also learn something very, very useful in programming, which is try except clause. Okay, so without any further ado, let's open our code editor and start coding. We already have function hi we wrote in one of the previous episodes. So far, when we run it, we had to call it in the end of the file. Like here, we have hi Ola. What we would like to do instead is to wait for user to give us a value and then run it with the text she provides. The first thing we need here is to be able to read the value that the user is typing. In programming jargon, we say that we are reading from standard input. Python has the built-in function that does that and it's called input. It basically waits for user to type something until the user clicks enter and then it just reads the whole line. Okay, let's try it in our file. We will replace hi Ola with input function. The function takes one argument. It will act as prompt for the user, so she will know what to do. Let's say we would like to print what's your name and then maybe some greater signs so we know where to type. We also want to store the returned value from input in a variable named line. Finally, we will call high function with the value from the input, so from the line. Time to save the file and run it in the console. What's your name text is displayed now and the program waits for you to provide a value, so it hasn't finished yet. We can now type the name, I will just type Ola, and click Enter. Hello Ola is printed now and the program is finished. Well done! Isn't that awesome? You just created the program that expects user to provide the values, and you are operating over these values and producing some output, not knowing what the value will be. This is a real programming. You just get stuff from the user and then do something with that. Okay, let's try something similar, but with the function that calculates the area of the square. We wrote it when talking about functions. I have a code stored in the square.py file. So I will open it and we will change it to use input. Now we would like to do the same as with our high function. We will type input and then text. Let's say we we'll want to print provide length of the square side. We will store the value from the input in a variable called side. Finally, we will call the aria function with the value stored in side variable. Let's save and run it in the console. So we type python3 square.py. There is an error. It says that it's impossible to multiply two texts. The thing is that input function in Python is reading everything that user types as a text, so as a string. But our function expects to get a number, so we can multiply it side by side. So to fix it, we would need to make sure that the text from the user is somehow transformed into the number. And obviously Python knows how to do that. There is a nice function called float that will take our text and change it into number. Let's try it. In aria function, we will type float from side and assign it back to the side variable. Now this variable has value returned from the function float with argument with old value of the side. So we send number as a text to the float method and it is returned as number and assigned to variable side. 
Let's save and run the script again. When we are asked to provide the number, we will type 4 and click Enter. It worked! We got an area of the square with side of length 4 calculated for us. But wait a minute. What happens if the user makes the mistake and instead of typing the correct number, she will type something different, for example her name? Let's run our program again. But this time we will try writing name, I will write Olaf, instead of providing the number. There is an error. What happened? Well, float function in Python expects to get text that you could somehow change into number. Transforming Ola into number is not possible and Python complains. And in the programming jargon, we call this complaining rising an error or exception. In this scenario, value error was raised, saying that transforming Ola text into number is not possible. But what to do now then? We don't want our program to crash any time user types something that we don't expect to get. It would be so much nicer to print some nice message so the user know what to do. For example, display the page saying this is not a number, please rerun the program. Here comes the fun part. Python has something called try accept statement. And if you wrap the code that you suspect might cause the error or exception in this try accept part, you would be able to do some things when this error actually occurs. To do that, we start with typing try keyword and then colon. We will start now a block of code. The code we had so far that was converting text into number, so float from side, will be now inside this block. So we need to indent it like this. We will also indent the next line with print. Then we will type except keyword, this time not indented. Here we tell Python, if there is an error, jump here. After that you need to specify what kind of error or exception you are suspecting to get here. We will type value error, as that was exactly the problem we encountered previously trying to convert text ola into number. Then we will add colon, so we are starting the block of code again. And this code will be executed only when the error happens. And in the block of code we will type print this is not a correct number, try to run the program again. This time it's a success. We have this is not a correct number, try to run the program again, print it. Congrats! You just wrote your first program that deals with the user errors. This is awesome! And if you wonder what happens if you forget to add accept part, and you just go with your program without having accept value error and then the block defined, then please try now and see what happens. What kind of error will you get? Will it be syntax error or maybe something else? And if you have the code that might be very problematic on many levels, you could catch different kinds of errors. You already saw quite a few of them. And if you want to do something different depending on the error, you can totally do that. If you are interested in errors and exceptions in Python, you should go and visit the Python documentation page and read a little bit more about them. I will put this link in the description below so you can check that later. That's it for now. You just learn how to read and use the value provided by user when the program is executed. You also learn how to deal with possible errors. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you want to learn how to program with me, make sure to subscribe to this channel and stay tuned. Have a lovely day. See you.